Amen, amen, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. New Life, my name is Andrew Paz. I'm the high school youth pastor here. I am excited to be here today. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Why don't you high five your neighbor and tell him you're ready, you're ready, you're ready. I believe God has some amazing things in store this morning. I am so pumped to be here today. Before we dive in, I felt led as I was preparing uh, my message. I just really wanted to, to uh, extend a, a big thank you to this community. I absolutely am so grateful for this community that God has blessed me and my wife to be a part of. And it's one thing to serve together, which is amazing, but just on a staffing end, uh, I, I really want you to know as the people of God of New Life, you have, done, have brought such a powerful impact on my life and my wife's life. I get choked up because I see amazing men and women in God in this place that because of your consistency, because of your faith, because of your serving, because of your love, it fires me up, it builds my faith, it helps me be more like Jesus. Thank you to this community. Thank you, Jesus, for all of you. I thank you all. Thank you, thank you. And of course, of course, I, I love, love, love our senior pastors. I love to give honor where honor is due. I am so grateful for their hearts. How many of you guys know we have amazing pastors of this church? Let me try that again. Shout it down like they can hear you on the live stream. We have amazing pastors that leads this group. And so can we thank Jesus for them and for all that he is doing? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, how are you guys doing today? Are we good? Are we, are we up? Second service in the house? I am so pumped. I just want to jump right on in. I, I have a lot to say and I have a condensed time and I really, really believe the Lord has a powerful word for all of us. I just want to be the vessel today and we here at New Life build our life on the word of God. And it is God's word that's going forth. I'm just the mouthpiece. Can I get an amen in the house? So I love to start my messages making this promise. I promise you I will give you my best. I have been at the feet of Jesus. I've been asking this Holy Spirit to empower me. I've, I'm just seeking wise counsel, studying scripture. Would you please give me your best? Would you lean in, pen in one hand, Bible in another, believing that God wants to speak to you today? Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. amen. All right, well, as we dive in, let me ask you guys, I really want to know this big question. How many of you in the room, hands going up, if you are a type A big planter or planner, you love to plan your events, your calendar, you love to plan uh, all your, your, your whatever birthdays and all that good stuff, family and functions, you are like type A, that is you. Raise your hand proudly. There's no shame in that. God bless you. Let me tell you why God bless you. It is people like me that need you. <laughs> God bless you for your faithfulness, for your commitment to plan out and put things in motion. I can, t I, I mean, myself, I am terrible. I am a spontaneous person. I don't plan out and I love to just be in the moment and just like, hey, let's go do this. Let's not do this. And I am so grateful for my wife who has done a phenomenal job being a type A planner, all the amazing spouses in the house. Can I get an amen if your spouse is a big planner and you bank on them planning your dates out. Thank God for them. They're like your personal bookkeeper. I am so grateful for my wife because she plans everything out. And if it wasn't for her, I would miss more than half of my events in life. I probably even want to be here this morning. <laughs> my wife is grateful. My in-laws are in the service and they've done a phenomenal job teaching her how to plan. This is how awesome my wife is. I just want to brag a little bit. This is her calendar coming up on the screen. All the events. All the, the, the payments, the where we're going, where to go, all, just she plans everything out. She's a phenomenal planner. This is my calendar here at work on my computer. <laughs> I know I got HSM on Wednesdays, that's about it. And I had a breakfast with one of my buddies and he wasn't, I didn't even go to that. But my planning is, <laughs> I missed it, I slept in. My planning is terrible and I, am th I thank God for this. I thank God that my wife has made some plans and put them in motion for me to follow. Yeah, give it for my wife. Let me, let, me make, let me make the point here. Our God has set some plans for our life and has put them in motion for you and I to follow. Did you know that the plans of God are way better than our plans? 
that God's ways are higher than our ways, that God wants to prosper us, not harm us. Can I get an amen? amen. Why don't you turn to him and say, God wants to prosper you. He wants to prosper you. The title of my message today is The Plans to Prosper. And we're going to look at just that, that God wants to prosper us even if you're a Dodger fan. I'm sorry. My best friend is in the front row and he's wearing a hat. I had to throw him some shade. Go Yankees. Maybe that's here. I can't say that the Yankees lost, so it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. So honestly, I, I, I'm so excited that God wants to prosper us. I want to give a quick disclaimer, though. This is not a prosperity teaching about your best life now. I, is it okay if I lay in today? Is it okay if I give you some biblical truth? Is that okay? Because I know that God's plans are better than my plans. I'm living it out and I'm seeing it throughout his word. And we're going to look at a powerful passage in today's message that shows us how powerful God's plans are. And it's probably one of the, I would say categorized as the top three most quoted scriptures in the Bible. It's found in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Plans to prosper, not to harm, right? Future and a hope, we all know it. You, if you have received a birthday card from your grandparents or parents or a graduation card and Gam Gam's telling you, Jeremiah 29, 11, even though you barely passed high school and it was because of your bilingual friend, you were able to get a passing grade in Spanish even though you're full Mexican and you don't speak a lick of Spanish. I'm, I'm just speaking, this is literally life, this is my life. And thank God for my buddy who helped me get past Spanish 1 and 2. And I know that God has plans to prosper you and I. And how he does that, it's so powerful because in this scripture we're going to look at in this passage in verses 4 through 14, I'm giving you a chance to turn there. We're going to see how powerful uh, what's taking place, the context, and we're going to see how powerful this word prosper, what it actually means. I want to give a biblical definition to help you and I do this thing called life with Jesus. Is that okay today? So if you have your Bibles, if you're there in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 14, we're going to look at how the Israelites, I'm going to say Israelites, they are God's people, and they are choosing to rebel and disobey God. And they are choosing their ways above God's ways. They're choosing their plans above God's plans. And this is what happens. This is a letter that the prophet Jeremiah is writing to them. In verse 4, if you're there, say go. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into where? From Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and what? Of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not, let, do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. Verse 10. This is what the Lord says. Here's the promise. Watch this. When how many years? Seven. When 70 years. Seven years? Seven. 70 years are completed for Babylon. I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know, for I know, God knows. God knows right where you're at today. God knows what you're going through. God knows your name. God knows your plans. God knows. Someone needs to hear that today. God knows. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and bring you back from the captivity. I will gather you from all nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I have carried you into what? See, verse 11 is quoted, and we see it all the time, and we see it in, in the Christian bookstore, birthday cards, graduation cards, without this deep understanding of God's plans to prosper us. Because this is the issue. You and I, especially myself, we face this, this question, if God's plans are good, why is it that I don't feel them or see them, and how do I trust them in it? And how do I fully you know, submit my plans? Because the hardest thing for us to follow is God's plans, we choose our plans. And I'm guilty of this. 
I have my plans in motion, and I find myself turning to my plans rather than what God's plans are. And so I want to look at what is, as, what is taking place in this passage because the core issue in this moment, it's not that God was leading his people into exile. It's that they chose their plans above God's plans. So I wonder how many of us today struggle with this idea that I can get away with my plans plus God's plans because it's all of God or it's none of God. It's all of his ways or it's none of his ways. And we see the Israelites in this moment, they are choosing to disobey. And the prophet Jeremiah is telling them, your disobedience, your plans has led you into exile. And so the issue isn't God leading them into exile. The issue is that they chose disobedience to their plans, which is now leading them not to prosper. So God is making this declaration that if you would seek me, you will find me. If you put me back at the head, you will <laughs> prosper in this life. This is so powerful. I wish I had more time. I, I encourage you this week to go home and read Jeremiah's chapter 5 and 6. But what's taking place in chapters 5 and 6 is the, the prophet Jeremiah is, is writing to his people uh, on behalf of God, the Israelites, and he's telling them, your plans are not succeeding. It's so bad in this moment. This is what he compares their disobedience, their plans, their choices. This is what he compares it to. He compares it to a prostitute. He compares their idolatry with, uh, with adultery. He calls them, you prostitutes, you're cheating on God because you're choosing your plans. And it convicted me when I was reading this passage. I'm like, man, Lord, where have I cheated you at with my plans? And the question I have for you today, new life, is how, where are you cheating God at in your life by putting your plans above his plans? We need to submit to God's plans and stop cheating with our plans and put his ways first rather than us trying to follow our ways. I'm laying in deep today. I got no response, so I know I'm hitting a nerve, man. I'm just, I'm just going to keep going because I'm getting dirty looks, man. Pastor Steve, I don't know if he does this, man. Some of us today are cheating on God with our tithe, with our energy, with our availability, with our giftings, even though he has given you those, uh, birth those giftings in you. Some of us today need to recognize that our plans lead to destruction. God's plans for us are prosperous if I choose his ways above my ways. Stop cheating on God with your plans and start committing to God by submitting to his plans. The Israelites choose their plans, and that's why they find themselves in this problem. The main problem here is their plans. And that's the first point today is the problem is with our plans. The problem is with our plans. We find ourselves in a situation or circumstance today and we're asking what, why is this happening? What's going on? We aren't putting God in his rightful place in our lives and we need to stop cheating on him and start inviting him in so that his plans can have its course in our lives. Can I get an amen in the house? It gets so, this, this is how bad it gets. It gets so bad in Jeremiah chapter seven, we're gonna read right now that Jeremiah is literally in the temple teaching. It's like church right back during this time. And he's teaching. And the people of God, the Israelites, are coming to church, but they still have their idols set up. Look at what it says in, in chapter 7, verses 8. It's coming up on the screen, verses 8 through 10. Do not be fooled into thinking what you, you will never suffer because the temple is here. It's a lie. Do you really think that you can still murder, commit adultery, lie, and burn incest to Baal, false prophet, and all those uh, new gods of yours? And then come here and stand before me in my temple and chant, we are safe, only to go right back to the evil themes? Man, this convicted me because I wonder how many of us come to church on Sundays and still have our idols set up back home. We treat this place like it's a social club. And we treat this place like it's just a gathering for us to play church when God has called us to be the church. I urge you, 
I, would you go home today and tear down your idols? Stop coming to church thinking you can worship God, but worship money. Worship God and worship that relationship. It's not going to work. If you want to live a prosperous life, you have to allow God's plan to fully take reign in your life. I urge you to go home and some of you need to delete some contacts right now. Some of you need to unfollow some friends. Some of you need to break off a relationship that is not of the Lord. Stop acting like or playing church and start being the church. How we do that is by allowing God's plans to conform our mind, our soul, our spirit and saying, all right, Lord, I choose your plans. I don't see it, but I trust it. And the Israelites find themselves being led into exile because they are choosing disobedience. They're choosing their plans. I remember when I was younger, I, I, I grew up in a, a household, three older brothers, older sister, and two younger sisters. And we were a big family, and I used to have to share my room with my brother. And, man, I used to hate cleaning my room. Where are my junior hires, high schoolers? Can I get an amen in the house, man? I don't know what it was in me. I am convinced that I will make an invention if you want to partner up with me. We have to figure some type of tool out there that if you throw your shirt on the floor, it will automatically make its way on a hanger into the closet. I believe we can do this. I, I, I struggle so hard with hanging my clothes. My wife can attest to this. I don't know why. I just struggle with hanging my clothes. And when I was younger, my dad would tell me, you need to clean your room and pick up your mess. And I would spend more time hiding all my dirty clothes, my dirty chonies underneath my bed, in the closet. Some don't, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you in here doing it and you're a grown man. No, I'm hiding, I'm hiding. and my dad would come up stairs, pull out all my, 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 my stuff underneath my bed. And he, he would be like, what, are you, what have you been doing for an hour? I spent more time trying to hide my mess than just clean my room. We spend more time trying to come to church, do our plans plus God's plans and make it our way when it's not His way. And we spend more time trying to hide our mess from God than just giving it to our Heavenly Father. Go home and clean your spiritual closet Go home, clean your spiritual house so that your heavenly father is not leading you into your consequences because this is what I know to be true. A, a, a powerful theologian has said this, you can choose your sins, but you cannot choose your consequences. I could choose to have premarital sex, but I did not choose to have a baby or some type of sexually transmitted disease that came with it. I could choose to go out and drink on Halloween and get drunk and choose to drive. And then I didn't choose, though, to get a DUI or I didn't choose to kill someone by accident. You can choose your sins, but you can't choose the consequences that come with it. And the core issue here with the Israelites is they're choosing their sins. And it's not that they're being led into exile. And so now they're faced with having to clean their mess. In verse 5, it says, go build homes. In verse 6, seek prosperity, have sons and daughters. What God is saying here is you have led, your, your disobedience has led you into exile. It's going to take some time to clean the mess that you have started. But because God is so good, because God is so sovereign, he's going to lead us through our mess rather than going around our mess. A wise man once told me this, God is always after straight cuts, never shortcuts. And how God does these straight cuts is by us going through the mess that we make. It's like if you're a father or a mother in the house and your child spills milk and you want to teach them a lesson, you want them to clean it up, right? But you also aren't going to just be mad at them and say, it's your fault, you're going to show them, give, teach them a lesson, be there with them and help them clean this mess that they made, right? Building some character, you know what I'm talking about? And that's what God does with us. God is after our character, not our comfort. I'm speaking to someone today. God is after our character. This is what I know to be true. We make a mess and God's forgiveness, it, it, God wants to, his plans wants to lead us into, our, into his forgiveness. Our failures are a, a doorway into his forgiveness. 
and he wants us to go through our mess rather than avoiding it. And he cares so much about our character. He wants us to grow by demonstrating and showing that even though you made a mess, I'm with you in it and I will help you clean it up because God is after a clean heart more than a clean room. If you want to live a prosperous life, you have to submit to God's plans. The staff, we've been working out on Tuesdays and Thursdays here at New Life. We have an amazing uh, trainer who comes, and I love her to death. I have this love-hate relationship for her. If she's here, you know I love you, but sometimes I just hate you because the things she has us do is borderline demonic, man. <laughs> Jumping in and out of tires. I'm like, tires blowing on cars. I don't know what they're doing on the floor. It's crazy. And what I've known to be true, and as I was studying for this, this, this message, that's how God leads us through our mess. That's how God demonstrates his character more than our comfort. How he does it is by us working out, getting stronger. It may not feel good. It may get be hard. It may not uh, uh, happen overnight. But God wants to build character in our life to grow you and I. That's part of his plans is to stretch us and grow us so that we can be a voice and we can reach this community and reach your family and reach your loved ones. But we got to clean our mess. Can I get an amen? amen. Some of us... We got to go home. We got to go forgive that individual, that family member. Some of us need to delete some contacts. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character, right? And some of us, if we don't nip unforgiveness in our lives, it's going to take out our calling in this life. And that is part of God's plans. He wants us to nip these things so that we can continue to grow with him. Can I get an amen in the house? Some of us here are asking, why doesn't God change our situation? God is using the situation that you created to change you. Amen. And he is doing that for me. He's done it with me. And the main thing here is God wants to lead us into forgiveness. And he wants us to come back to him and choose his plans rather than following our plans like we see the Israelites do being led into exile. Isaiah 55 verses 8 through 9 coming on the screen beautifully says... For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are always higher. Can I get an amen? amen. The second point I want to look at today is the peace in God's plan. The peace in God's plan. What's so powerful about this passage is we have a misunderstanding of the word prosperous. How many of you, with a show of hands, when you hear prosper, you think of financial gain, wealth, you think of a career at an all-time high. When you hear prosperity, you think that life is great and everything's going good. Let me break this word down. Is it okay if we look at what God is saying in Jeremiah 29, 11? Because in Jeremiah chapter uh, 29, verse 10, that's the actual promise. Verse 11, there is a powerful meaning behind it. Is it okay if we do a word study today? I, I need to show you this, what these words mean to help us. The word prosper in verse 11, when God says, I have plans to prosper you. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew, back in this time, the original language was Hebrew. So when you go back to the first definition, the word we get prosper, we get it from the word in Hebrew, we get it from shalom. Someone say shalom. Shalom, shalom means peace. And in the New Testament, that language was originally written in Greek. And when we translate it into English, when we get our word peace, it's in the original Greek, it's erene. Someone say erene. Both of these words mean completeness, wholeness, lacking nothing. So when God says, I have plans to prosper you, he's saying, I have plans to give you peace in the midst of your storms. When God says, I have plans to prosper you, he's saying, I have given you peace in this life and the mess that you're in or the mess that's around you. What's powerful about this is in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, I want to prove my point because this is so good and this wrecked me. Uh, wrecked me. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the prophet Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus, the one to come during this time. And look at what he says. For to us a child is born, to give us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That word in Hebrew is shalom. 
Watch what the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. He says, for him himself, talking about Jesus, is our what? Is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier that dividing the wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace. The original uh, word for that is erene, which means wholesome, completeness, lacking nothing. What's your point? Pause. The plans to prosper is to plans to have peace. The person of peace is Jesus Christ. The plans that God has for us is to give you and I Jesus. And because of Jesus, I stand here with the future and I stand here with the hope because I'm forgiven, because I'm saved, because I'm redeemed, because of his grace, because of his love, because of his mercy. You stand here today, you have a hope and a future because you're redeemed, because you're loved, because of the grace of God and the mercies of God. The plans of prosperity is not wealth and money. It's bigger than that. It's peace through the storm. It's peace through knowing that I, I know the outcome because of Jesus Christ and the finished work on Calvary 2,000 years ago. The plans that God has for you and I is peace in this world. Peace of mind when everything is being shaken. And how many know with the show of hands, this world is getting darker and darker. So thank God for Jesus. Thank God for your plans. Thank God, Jesus, you saved us. Thank God you have given us a future and a hope, Lord. And what's powerful is we only have hope because we know our future. How do we know our future? Jesus said it as last words on the cross. It is finished. Some of you need to hear this today. You're in your struggles, wayward kids, financial crisis, whatever it may be. Listen to the Bibles, the plans that God has. Listen to the voice of Jesus when he says, it is finished, it is finished, it is finished. It is finished. But you have to put him in his rightful place, trust him, and say, Lord, your plans are better than my plans, so I lean on you, not on my own understanding. Can I get an amen? amen. Some of you are like, well, how do we trust the future if, if, if we don't know it? Well, I would say, do you know Jesus? I know this to be true. You can trust an unknown, an unknown future if you know God. And you don't have to worry about your past when Jesus has promised you and I a future. And so when we read Jeremiah 29, 11, it's bigger than money. It's bigger than wealth. I have peace of mind in this very dark world so I can shine and reach this generation and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and that he would be displayed so that everyone would know and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And you, your plans, the, life, the plans that God has for you is plans for, of Jesus. He wants to give you his son. He wants to give you his son. And he already gave that up 2,000 years ago, right? Look at what Jesus tells his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 33. One of my favorite passages of scripture. I have told you these things so that in me you may have what? Erene. Wholesome. Completeness, completeness, lacking nothing. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have what? Thank you, Jesus, for the peace of mind. Thank you, Jesus, that I have a future and a hope because of the finished work on the cross. And so my heart today is that we would create time and space, a moment where we can encounter the living God. See, I believe in power of moments. It was in 2012 at a conference where I experienced the radical love of Jesus. And man, pastor said it beautifully. It, it, it struck a chord in my heart. It was probably about three months ago he gave a message. Pastor Steve said that he loves the lights. He loves the LED screen. He loves the haze. He loves it all. But at the end of the day, he just wants Jesus. Just give me Jesus. And I love here at New Life, as a side note, I love that we can leverage technology to glorify God. I love that. Because technology was birthed in Genesis 3, but I don't want to get into that. It's another message. But I love... 
pastor saying that because it hit me hard because I find myself in the midst of my pain and struggles and in my planning, and I wanna live a prosperous life and lean on God's planning, I realize and I recognize that I need more of Jesus. If I wanna be a better husband, I need to fall more in love with Jesus. If I wanna be a, ch a better follower of God, then I need to fall more in love with Jesus. If I want to be a better person in this world, I need to fall more in love with Jesus. My future and my hope is predicated upon the love that I keep allowing to grow between me and Jesus. And I recognize in my conviction as I study this, the plans that I need to uh, uh, receive, the plans that God is calling us to receive is Jesus. It's been Jesus. It will always be Jesus. Jesus has finished it. Jesus wants to lead us into our, our destiny. Jesus wants to carry us through our problems, through our mess. Jesus is our future and our hope. And so I share these power, I share that testimony of uh, power uh, and moments because this moment with no one, please don't leave. We have a tendency of getting up and beelining it. I, I, I prayed and tried, tried to create space on the back end that we would take this moment and recognize that the guest of honor, which is Jesus, is here. And he wants to meet you right where you're at. And he wants, and he's asking this question. Are you willing to trade your plans with his today? Are you willing to fall more in love with him today? And so how I want to close is by just praying for us. And there's plenty of time. Please don't leave. We're going to stand together. Not yet, but when I say we're going to stand together. And then we're going to just have no lights. We're going to have the lights come off. We're just going to have a moment and be in the presence of Jesus. Because I don't know about you, but I just want to fall more in love with my Savior because He is not my self-help genie. He is my Savior that I need to be more and more like. So as you put your belongings aside and as you stand with me with heads down, eyes closed, arms open, I want to pray for us and I want to lead us back into this time of worship, recognizing that the person and power of Jesus Christ is here. So Father, we love you. Jesus, we thank you that you give us a future and a hope that our prosperous life is only in you and that we have peace in this world if we put you and trust you, Lord. And it starts by trusting you in this moment. Will we trust you with our lives? Will we trust you with our situation? Will we trust you with our kids? Will we trust you with our finances? So Lord, we wanna know more of you so that we can trust you, Lord. So right now, would you meet your people so that they can let any walls come down in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Thank you, Jesus, just as I am, I come. Hey, I'm Steve Abraham, the pastor of New Life Oxnard. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. You can join us live every Sunday for a new sermon and live worship. Also, be sure to take a minute to subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss any of our new videos or live streams, and please share with a friend. And if you would like to partner with us in furthering the gospel, please click the link below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and God bless you.